Roswell Flight Test Crew, here at CES 2016 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. FAA Administrator Michael Borg is about to speak at a conference. Let's go see what he's got to say. We've all heard various estimates of the number of small drones that would be sold for recreational use this past holiday season. And while the numbers vary, it's very, very clear that retailers expected to sell a significant number. Now, safely integrating these new pilots into the national airspace system is one of the FAA's top priorities in order to protect manned aircraft, to protect people on the ground, and of course to protect innovation. Maintaining the highest levels of safety requires us to constantly evolve our approach, whether we're talking about commercial aircraft like Boeing 747s or unmanned quadcopters that weigh only a few pounds. Over the past year, working with our government, industry, and model aircraft community partners, we've made significant progress on this front. Now we reached one of our most significant integration milestones just before Christmas when we implemented an easy-to-use web-based drone registration system. The system went live just two months after Secretary Fox and I announced this initiative. Simply put, registration is all about safety. It provides us with a key opportunity to educate the new generation of airspace users that as soon as they start flying outside, effectively, they become pilots. And there are safety implications to how they fly there are rules and regulations they need to follow, and it will also help them become part of the safety culture that has been deeply embedded in traditional aviation for more than a century. While at the same time, still providing for recreation, still providing for innovation, which are staples of American aviation. And when necessary, registration will help us track down people who operate unsafely. Now it's simple and it's mandatory for aircraft that weigh between 0.55 pounds, or about a little over a half pound, and 55 pounds. You enter basic information, name address, and email address into our online system. You read and acknowledge our basic safety guidelines, and then you pay $5, and that fee will be refunded if you register by January 20th. And you get, right there, a registration number. Your registration is valid for three years and you can register an unlimited number of aircraft that you intend to use for recreational purposes. As of today, over 181,000 have registered, but this is really just the beginning. Now that we've set up the registration system, our challenge is to make sure everyone is aware of the requirement and in fact registers. Our partnerships, such as Know Before You Fly, are also critical. Know Before You Fly began just 13 months ago as a partnership involving the Association of Unmanned Vehicles International, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and the FAA. And today, it has expanded to include more than 50 members, including 20 that joined in November and December alone. I want to stress how important this campaign is about spreading the word about safe flying. And the addition of new partners continues to add to its value and its reach. But we also must constantly evolve our approach and identify new methods for reaching all of the new airspace users that are out there. And new methods are making the registration process even easier for consumers. For example, we're working to support potential third-party applications, such as smartphone apps that could enable manufacturers or retailers to scan a code on a drone and automatically register it at the same time. You may also be aware that we've been working for the past several, mo several months on our smartphone app, Before You Fly, which tells people about current or upcoming restrictions where they want to fly their unmanned aircraft. We introduced Before You Fly last August for limited beta testing, and we made a number of enhancements based on the tester's feedback. And I'm pleased to announce that later today, an updated iOS version of Before You Fly will be available to the general public free of charge. We're also going to release an Android version today for beta testing, as we did last year for the iOS version. Now, the app provides clear direction with a status indicator, which tells the user, proceed with caution, warning, action required, or flight prohibited. The app also features a planner mode that allows the user to see if there are any restrictions 
at a different time and location for an upcoming flight. Now, like UAS registration, we expect that before you fly, we'll help heighten public awareness about what it means to operate unmanned aircraft safely. Now, a number of other important developments around education are occurring with our partners that you might not be aware of. Additional companies are including no before you fly materials in their packaging, joining companies like DJI, Parrot, and Unique, which began doing so last year. Retailer Best Buy put no before you fly information on the receipts of everyone who bought drones this past holiday season. The Consumer Technology Association is leading an effort to standardize unmanned aircraft serial numbers to make it easier to identify specific aircraft. The idea here is to enable a computer app to scan an aircraft serial number and auto automatically populate the registration file with the make, model, and serial number without anyone having to manually enter the number into the system. Google and Parrot are partners in this initiative. And this may not seem like glamorous work, but it is extremely important in order to ensure that we are safely integrating drones. The FAA also issued important guidance last month to states and municipalities that are, consi that are considering laws or regulations addressing UAS use. Our guidance explains that any local laws should be consistent with the extensive regula federal regulatory framework for aircraft and for airspace use. Now, a lot of our recent public focus has been on recreational drones, but we've also been working on a rule that will allow routine, safe commercial, and other non-hobby operations of small unmanned aircraft. We expect to finalize the rule in the spring of this year. And meanwhile, we have authorized more than 3,000 commercial operators on a case-by-case -case basis, ranging from movie filming and smokestack inspections to aerial photography and land surveying. While we've streamlined the current authorization process, the rule will greatly decrease the need for case-by-case -case approvals, increasing commercial operators' ease of access to the national airspace system. We're also going to continue working with our Pathfinder program industry partners to explore unmanned aircraft operations that go beyond those proposed in the rule. We're going to take every opportunity to promote our pre-flight safety checklist, and we're going to do more outreach that is targeted to drone pilots so they're aware of no drone zones for specific events and for specific conditions, such as the Super Bowl, or of course, we'll see it again in the summer, the upcoming wildfire season. We want to give pilots the ability to fly safe and to fly smart so that they can all enjoy the benefits of their unmanned aircraft. Now, no single initiative is the single solution when it comes to safely integrating unmanned aircraft, be they for commercial or for recreational use into the national airspace system. Our job is to create a new culture in aviation so that all of the users, whether they're old or whether they're new, understand the importance of operating safely and to know what their responsibilities are as pilots. And I'm confident that working together with our partners in safety, we will succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.